So guys, in this video, I'll be going over the new Gear Lab update, starring the new ultra rare torpedo bomber, the Fairy Spearfish. I'll leave the data mine in the description as usual, so you can look over it yourself. And I will begin with the Spearfish. It's a pretty unique plane since it carries not only torpedoes, but also rockets. Being a parallel torpedo bomber with 4 torpedoes per strike, the comparison with Wyvern is pretty easy to make. To start, let's just assume that the damage of the rockets are added onto the torps. These are the total base damage per load at plus 10 for each armor type. As you can see, the total load of the Spearfish is stronger than that of the Wyvern, except against heavy armor. Its DPS would be higher on heavy as well, but DPS is almost entirely irrelevant when talking about planes. Next, let's consider what happens in a more realistic scenario when you would use parallel torpedo bombers. I don't think that even in Chapter 15, parallel torpedoes will reach a 100% hit rate, so by adjusting the hit rate of only the torpedo bombers to 75%, which isn't really a concrete number, but seems reasonable enough, we can see that the Spearfish pulls further ahead of the Wyvern, not only in useless DPS metrics, but also in total damage dealt per strike. Essentially, the lower the hit rate of the Torps, the further the Spearfish pulls ahead of the Wyvern. Unfortunately, where Wyvern is the most commonly seen, being campaign chapters 12 and onward, there are a couple of factors that prevent the Spearfish from being a better option. First is the concealment mechanic in chapters 14 and 15, which completely wrecks the hit rate of rockets. Its effect is hard to measure, but it's extremely obvious and will most likely make the rockets part of the payload irrelevant. The second factor is anti-air, since wyverns are able to intercept enemy planes, unlike most other torpedo bombers, including the Spearfish. Due to these two factors, I don't really see a scenario where these planes would replace wyverns, where you would want to use wyverns, but maybe there's something I'm missing and I'll change my mind after messing around with them. Next, let's compare its performance with aimed torpedo bombers, and I'm going to assume that you're using the aimed torpedo bombers responsibly, meaning against a single target and making sure that they all land. Looking at its cooldown, its closest competitor would be the Sayun. Against a single target, I would handwave the hit rate of parallel torps to be somewhere between 25-50%. to 50%. At 50%, it definitely beats out the Sayun especially factoring in its 20 extra aviation stat, but on the lower end, it's pretty pathetic. In any case, I think it would have a hard time beating out the Ryusei and JU-87 on a per-strike basis, just slightly winning out against light armor. Where I can see the Spearfish having the most potential is in multiple enemy boss fights, for example, Augury meta, where it could potentially deal much more damage than its competitors, but those are quite rare to come by. It'll also likely be a pretty good option for compositions involving two battleships and one carrier, where for some reason there's no way to make sure that all of your aimed torps hit. This is a pretty niche scenario as well, but now that I think about it, there is a comp like that, which is the Musashi Shinano Haku comp, which is good at dealing against heavy armor and since you don't have Bismarck or Implacable in the fleet, whether or not your aimed torpedoes will hit is pretty much at the discretion of the boss. In any case, despite being a new rainbow equipment, it's not really game-changing and only provides a small upgrade for torpedo bombers against light armor enemies in most cases. While I'm on the topic of planes, I'll quickly talk about the Shiden. It has the exact same guns and loadout as the old Shiden, just on a lower cooldown. It still has 60 speed, so its anti-air potential is severely gimped, and both in terms of anti-air as well as surface damage it loses to the flapjack. So for now, I see no real use for it. Next, we have the upgrade of the Odin gun. Although it is stronger and faster than the twin 406mm SKC, it is still probably just a side grade because oftentimes the lower spread of the twin gun will result in higher hit rate and damage. It is definitely one off, if not the best, HE mobbing gun though, especially for proccing barrages. But the upgrade from existing options is rather minor, so do take that into account if your resources are limited. And finally, we have what I thought at first glance would be the best piece of equipment in this update, but after thinking about it for a little bit more, it's probably not super amazing. 
These new tarps are skewed toward dealing with light armor and have pretty high damage as well as relatively low cooldown. They are also quite cheap to craft. The only issue, and a pretty big one at that, is that they are not homing, so it'll be interesting to see if they will actually be able to deal more damage against a single target light boss compared to the good old quad mags, which have a hit rate of about 75% on auto for ships with the torpedo spread reduction perk. But for sure they'll be a good option for mobbing scenarios where there are few heavy armor enemies present. And that's all we have for the new equipment. As for the PR3 equipment that have been added to the gear lab, the triple 406 MLE is still one of the best battleship guns, and sextuple Bofors are a good option if you can't afford the rainbow anti-air gun. The Drake gun is also there, but I personally would not recommend it. So that's pretty much going to be everything as far as the gear lab update is concerned. I should also mention that Oil Cap has finally been added to chapter 15, which I haven't touched since whenever my last stream or video of it was, so I'll probably be experimenting a lot with new ships and equipment there in the near future. Anyways, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.